Hi gang, Scott here. We're going to have some fun with the glow filter in on one effects. Glow will add a dreamy quality to your photo, you know, an air of mystery. Uh, it's, it's often used in portraiture uh, to soften a person's skin and make them, well, glow a bit in the uh, portrait. I'm a landscape guy, so we're going to look at a landscape photo here. And uh, there's one key thing that I want to make sure you do with your glow effects for landscapes. And I'll get into that after we've looked at the tool, understand its controls, and uh, get familiar with, with how this glow uh, Glow filter operates. Really quick, if you are interested in adding on one to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there. It'll save you 20% on any of your purchases from on one. So let's look at glow. This landscape photo uh, is kind of a classic for a glow look. It's uh, it's it's already got some some brightness, some airiness to it, and a glow can make it a little more inviting. Um, you know, a, a little dreamier, almost uh, you know, stylized kind of look. Let's add this glow filter on here. We have our normal stuff, you know, across the top. We have our, our masking area. We have our blending options. We have our opacity slider. We've got styles. I'm going to come back to those in a minute. Uh, one thing that's interesting about glow is by default, the amount is zero. So when you add the glow filter to your stack, nothing changes in your photo to start with. And, you know, that's, um, that's an oddity for um, on one effects. Most filters, when you add them, they do something. Not glow. Glow starts off with nothing. Uh, halo. What is halo? That will control the diffusion of the glow, where you have your brighter areas that are going to glow. Think of like uh, think of a street lamp in say fog, and how far out does that lamp, you know, that, that light from that lamp diffuse out into the fog? It's kind of what halo is doing. It's like stretching out that uh, that you know bubble of soft light. And then we have a mode. These are subsets of your blending modes. These are all the like the subset of what's available in the gear menu, right? We've got all these ones here. Well, these are more convenient because often these are the blending modes that work well with a glow look. So they're available straight away and the styles will adjust some of those things accordingly. So let's jump back into styles because that's where I usually like to begin with the glow tool. Hovering over these, we'll start to see changes to the photo. And some of these looks are very strong, as with any tool, any filter. It depends on the photo. Um, you know, like Hollywood glow is very bright, and uh, that's like often used with portrait work. Uh, we have a normal glow, got the uh, ever popular Orton kind of look. Uh, radiance and rich, I often like for my landscapes. We've got uh, strong, white, you know, no darks. I liked what Deep Forest was doing, but it's really. A strong look. I mean, this is almost impressionistic in uh, in its um, treatment here. Not um, you know, not not necessarily bad, but uh, it's a little strong for my taste. But let me choose that, and we'll see a few changes. Now we see the amount is really high. The halo's been bumped up a little bit, and we have a, a different blending mode. Let me zoom into an area here, just so we can get an appreciation for these sliders here. So here's the amount, and you can see as I pull that down and pull it back. As I push it farther, you know, the shadows are getting deeper, the, the, the detail is getting diffused. It's almost, it's not quite a blur, but it's certainly almost like a, a smear. Uh, and then Halo, um, watch the bright areas like on these shrubs and so forth. As I push Halo farther, they kind of stretch and move out, right? And they get more and more diffuse. Uh, for a, a photo like this, you know, a, a Halo that high, doesn't make a lot of sense. I want to maintain some amount of separation of light and dark tone so I don't lose the, the, the texture and the depth that's in there. And you can see that at the far end, if I bring it down, we see more detail. Uh, I shouldn't say detail. We see more separation of tones. As I push it farther up, it starts to spread and diffuse even more. So that's another control you have, depending on what you're looking for, right? So I think for this, the halo, I'll keep it in the mid-20s or so. That's fine. You can check your blending modes. Some of these will look terrible with a glow. Some of them will look good. Oftentimes, when you choose a style, the blending mode that comes with it is the best choice. There's a reason the style is created that way. But once you've got all these things dialed in, I'm looking at this going... I like what's going on with the grass. 
I'm losing too much detail in, um, in my trees and so forth. The one thing that I want you to do with your glow looks is apply a luminosity mask. And the reason for that is by default, just a one click on the luminosity mask. We'll do that in just a second. It's going to add a mask to the dark areas and it will let the glow effect uh, impact the brighter areas more. And that's just natural because dark things don't glow, bright things do. So I always am applying a luminosity mask. I'll open up the masking area, click the lumen button once, right? And then um, I'll, I'll play with density. This is, this is kind of like no mask at all, start to add that mask in. But uh, let me click view for a second here. This is the mask, right? This is the mask. So here's the luminosity mask at full strength. Anything that is dark gray or black, the glow is being downplayed or removed. And the brighter areas, you know, kind of, uh, you know, a brighter gray, mid gray up to white, the glow is being added. And so now as I dial back that density, density overall is saying, I'll show the view again, and it's kind of, um, give me some of this glow everywhere, but uh, kind of mix a full strength 100% white mask with my luminosity mask. I'm dialing back the strength of the luminosity mask and I'll do that visually and just kind of watch the scene. And I, I kind of like where it's ending up here. You know, uh, let me reset the mask just so you can see before that luminosity mask and undo after. I still have the glow. I still have that dreamy quality. But the trees and the, the shrubs and the scrub, it, it, it maintained some of the detail. And that's the thing about glow. You're really doing a, a push and pull, a trade-off on this soft, airy, dreaming quality, but wanting to keep some level of detail. You, know, you can't have both, so you have to do a little push and pull. And a luminosity mask is a great way to do that. And it just, for landscapes, adds that natural type of feel. So, uh, so one more time, let's take a look at this whole thing overall, just before the glow and after. I really like the improvement. This is one filter, and you know, if you were doing this without someone narrating it to you, you know, you're doing three or four clicks, you're checking out some styles, you're popping in, adding a luminosity mask, you're, you're dialing in your density, and then you're done, and you get a really, really nice change overall, and it's, um, it, it's just a more pleasing photo to me. So that is the glow filter in on one effects. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to use that lumen button. Just one click, dial back density, and you're going to have a much more natural looking glow for your landscapes. Give it a try. Got any other questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.